Welcome and hello from myself, Chrisula Sirigu, the Golden Muse. On today's episode, it's uh, another holistic call, but this time the actual topic is in support of the World Childless Week that's happening between the 11th and the 17th of September. This is a new initiative, a new campaign originated by Stephanie Phillips, who is actually on the call here with us. Nikki Fletcher is also very much supportive, 100% of this. Myself, Chrisula, and, uh, and welcome to Jody Day, Shafali, and Chelsea. Chelsea is actually calling from, uh, joining us from Canada. Jody from uh, Spain, Ibiza, and Nikki from France, south, southwest France, right, Nikki? Uh, and uh, yeah. I think, Shafali, you are down in London. And uh, myself, I'm in the heart of uh, England, uh, south, of Ma Ma south of Manchester, just to give you in Cheshire. And Steph, you're based somewhere in the south as well, aren't you? No, I'm Worcestershire. Ah, okay, okay. So we've got a bit of, a bit of uh, you know, international call. That's lovely. I love that. I love that, that kind of thing. So welcome on today's, uh, today's uh, live chat. Um, we're all here because uh, we would like to, to raise our voice, to share our voice and uh, show how we can all work together and inspire each other, uh, whatever we're going through, or whatever stage we are in life. And, and whether this, you're childless, uh, uh, not by choice, or you are somewhere in different stage in life, you know, accepting whatever happened to you. And uh, we're here to offer support. And that's, that's, the, that's one of the key reasons. Uh, Stephanie Phillips will, will be talking to us later on about uh, the vision and the program of activity, some ideas to keep us going. I'm sure things are evolving as everything in life. So, so if something else, you know, another inspiration comes in, I'm sure it will be great to, to, to bring it in. And uh, you're all welcome to share a little bit about who you are and uh, what, uh, you know, your involvement or your contribution in uh, whatever shape or form to support the World Childless Week, okay? My, my aim is to create this platform here, this space, this safe space for all of us, for any of you who would like to come along and, and share and communicate and connect because connection is truly, truly important. Isolation is not the answer, okay? So uh, I like to, I, I will start with you, Steph, because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's good to start with you and um, just, um, Tell us a little bit about uh, your vision behind the World Childless Week. And uh, we'll be talking about the program. But first of all, start, say a little bit about yourself and your vision. Hello. Okay. Um, well, I found out just before my 40th birthday that I would not be a mum and I'd not get the dream that I'd had in my whole life, obviously fell apart and shattered at that moment. Like I think a lot of people feel when suddenly the plan to be a mum, the dreams of how to bring the children to the world falls apart and you suddenly think, oh heck, where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. And for years I hid away, I buried my emotions and nothing happened, which wasn't good for me because all the angles inside, it was there festering and building up. Years later, I suddenly for some reason decided to search on Facebook for childless support groups mm -hmm. and was really shocked to actually find that they existed they were free they were there I could join so I did I signed up to a few you know you find which one suits you best each one's different for different people you know for your stage of journey whether you are still trying to conceive whether you're thinking of adoption whether you're past that there's so many different categories there that we've all mm. got to find the right one for us um I found one that seemed to be amazing I think at the beginning I probably sat in the background and just read the posts and looked on and as time goes over you think I actually understand what these people are saying mm. I know what their emotions are because I'm feeling them and you start to realize that all of a sudden you're not alone and you do actually belong and you have a family online who want to be there and support you mm -hmm. and after a while you start to speak out you start to post and you start ripping off those little plasters one by one and letting the emotions out yeah. And I just think to be amongst other people who understand you 100% and to validate your feelings and your emotions is, well, for me, it was a miracle. It was the way that helped me step forward. And it took a few years. But then I think about two years ago, I suddenly started to find that I was confident enough to speak out to people in public. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just all behind closed doors anymore. 
and as time progressed I got to the point where I'm here and I'm now and I'm thinking I will shout about being childless now because people need to know that we exist and we are here because there is so little as Jodie has said over the last few years she's pushing it forward but there is so little about being childless not by choice people make assumptions um, about who we are and how we live and where we got to the situation we are and the majority of them are usually false wrong inaccurate however you want to say but to sort of try and change this i've been sort of like watching like both the uk and the usa of the national infertility awareness weeks but again they focus on fertility rather than infertility mm. so the post there didn't relate to me they were all sort of saying things about what you could try and do what could improve your health or your fertility or possibly you could consider adoption or surrogacy and all those options are already gone Mm. and it felt like there was nothing there so it suddenly occurred to me that we needed something to actually say we are childless we are past all the options and we need to be noticed so I've been playing around with the idea for several months um so I've sort of whispered the idea to a few people and they've all said it's a good idea and then literally what a month ago I think it was I said let's do it let's work out how way to actually get it out there that the child is not by choice matter we're a bigger percentage of the population than most people realize mm. and decided should we just do a day and i thought a day is not enough everybody no. else has a week why not us we deserve to have that time because if you have 24 hours it's come it's gone it's passed we've disappeared again so that was basically me thinking yeah we all need to be heard but i don't want it to be about me i don't want it to be about the groups that i admin i want it to be about the whole childless community coming together all helping each other do different posts and interact within the week and share on mass from the one world childless week page but get the word out there and for the two reasons one for those who are childless and past the point of ever being a mum to find us to realize there is support that we can go past and find a happy life again but also in the hope that we can get parents to see a little bit of the world through our eyes and understand our emotions. And then perhaps we can sort of break down through the barriers and the taboo that childlessness still is. Mm. So I think that's all of it really in summary. So it's, you know, it's twofold. It's mainly for the people who are childless because that's, it's about us and it's about us coming together. But if we can educate people outside of our circle, then that is a real bonus. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Um, and that education does take a bit of a bit of time, actually. <laughs> and change, change takes a bit of time, but you know we will persevere. <laughs> we are strong. We're going to go through it, and together we can do better. Um, thank you, Steph. Thank you. Um, and the actual dates of the um, World childless uh, week is between the 11th and the 17th of september i will sh keep sharing that because people may just pop in at some point and start listening and watching and i would like to know a little bit about you know so they feel that you know they are included and you know what we're talking about okay brilliant so um we'll be sharing what's happening during the week in a short while but i would like to carry on with the introductions and your own uh, feelings and where you are at this at this point in your life so, so we're all sort of feeling you know somehow we resonate with each other, each other and there's some sort of sort of connection going on so um i will go first to shaffley because um yeah and i will come later to you nikki uh, because um shaffley you're actually um you're an amazing uh, lady you you i've just spoke to you uh, very briefly last night but you're doing a lot of research and uh, for your PhD, but you have already accomplished you know, a dissertation, but you tell us what the actual research is all about and your own passion and vision. So for the moment, I'm researching how individuals adjust to living with infertility. As you said before, you know, there's not a lot available for people that are going through this problem and then get to a point where they have to go to plan B. It goes back to that situation where, like, you know, as Jodie was mentioning earlier, you know, people and charities are facing... Is it possible to... Is, sorry, Shafal, is it possible to put your volume up or something? Yeah. Because it's, we cannot hear you. Yeah. Is that better? Sorry. Um, but yeah, as Jodie was saying earlier, you know, there's charities and, you know, things like Utility Awareness Week where they are turning away people who haven't had the typical 
success story. And I think, you know, that's heartbreaking on so many different levels. And I think as a researcher as well, sitting with people who are coming to you with stories that aren't successful and you know they need an outlet and it's all about sharing that space and sharing that information because it will help so many other people and then, you know, I'm one of those people that said if one person reads my research I can feel you know what I'm not alone and it's okay to feel like this that's job done so you know I want to work with you guys to help spread the knowledge spread the word break taboo and you know I've also seen it on a cultural level um mm -hmm. If you can't have a child it could be for multiple reasons but coming from an asian background it's very much like okay why can't you have a child well the problem might not be with me it could be with my partner no but it's you why can't you have this child mm -hmm. so it's all about working together breaking that taboo and making it you know something that's a spoken about topic and i think that's really where i'm at at the moment and helping people to realize that you know what it's okay it's okay to have plan b it's okay and there's you know when I said there's more research that needs to be done the more we can do will help a wider audience in so many different ways yes yes and you do interview people at the moment for your for your PhD yes so are you still looking for people I'm looking for men actually. you're looking for men fantastic I love the fact that you're bringing men and women on, on board because <laughs> it's not just a woman's uh, situation it's also a man's situation yeah Last but two years ago, I conducted some research looking at the male experiences of infertility, and I was told by so many people, you know, nobody's going to want to talk to you. You're very young. Men don't want to talk about these kind of problems. And I thought, well, how do you know that? Have you gone and actually spoken to these gentlemen? Have you gone and put up a post? Turns out that lecturer hadn't. Um, I went and did the research and I was absolutely gobsmacked with the amount of people that were getting in touch. Even after the study had finished, people were still emailing me in and saying, look, can we take part? Um, I have actually published that research and I'm happy to share that around too. But, you know, mm -hmm. it goes back to saying as well, infertility isn't just a female problem, it's a male problem. Um, and men do go through this whole issue of childlessness as well. So why should they be left out of the equation? Mm -hmm. Oh, they shouldn't. Yeah. No, they shouldn't. Yes, yes. And maybe that's something that we could look into as well over that week is to incorporate men and see how that pans out. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well, we can actually. Um, uh, part of what my contribution is at this point, let me just clarify as well that apart from hosting these live chats, live shows here on Zoom which I'm, I'm planning to, to host them next Wednesday and in, in the following Wednesday. So we're going to have a, a pre, uh, the, the pre campaign shows and during the, the, the week shows as well. But equally, um, I've been involved with radio broadcasting and hence that's why I am sort of creating this platform here as well. And I do host a, a weekly show called The Health and Healing on Redshift Radio. And it is uh, online. Basically, anyone in the world can... Uh, you know, log in and online, and then everybody can listen in. And equally, you're all here on the call. You're very much welcome to join. Um, I will be hosting uh, two particular shows on the 7th of September, which is before the World Ch Childless Week. Again, and it'd be great to have uh, Steph, Nikki, uh, Jody, if you can join us, Shafali, and anybody else. And I don't know how Chelsea will be possible for you to join us as well. Uh, and anyone else who, who actually is going to watch this afterwards, watch this video afterwards, and then you'd like to get involved and then you'd like to, to come on board, you're very much welcome to, to connect with me uh, or connect via the Facebook page that Steph, uh, Steph uh, is, is hosting or various other pages that they are involved. Nikki, today I actually, I, I, was, I, was, I joined in, in two different Facebook close group pages. So there's lots of, Lots of things going on. So um, we'll keep uh, sharing the message and then more people will find out. There's, there's other things are going on. Nick is going to tell us about two other campaigns that are happening at the same time. Uh, and, uh, and, and yes, so just to say that this is not, this is, this is one possibility here, but also we've got the, the, a different channel of communication to spread the news, spread awareness uh, on the radio shows. Okay, so so this is I will just be putting a few things and ideas every now and then just to <laughs> so um, brilliant. Uh, and also, let me just point out here, Shafali, that you are hosting something tomorrow on Twitter. 
I would you like to very briefly to say, to say what that is? Because I will, I will do my best to, uh, after this recording is finished, to upload it on YouTube and then get it out there so, so you can uh, retweet and all of that and create that awareness. Um, well, I'm, I am hosting a Twitter chat tomorrow um, with the World Health Innovation Summit and tomorrow we're going to be discussing fertility education and the importance behind it. Fabulous, fabulous. So, so, so that's happening tomorrow at seven o'clock um, UK time. Okay, on Twitter. Fabulous, Nikki. I'm coming to you now because there's more is going on in the background <laughs> to, to to create that that possibility for people to know more about uh, World Childless Week. Uh, so, Nikki, uh, welcome. Just uh, share a few things about yourself and uh, what every, the other bits that we do to promote uh, the. WCW. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Chris Sula. Uh, it's great to be here. And also, uh, hi, Shafali. Lovely to uh, connect with you properly. Uh, and I will be taking part in your Twitter hour tomorrow as well. Um, so, yes, my, my name is Nikki Fletcher. I, um, I have stage four endometriosis, which uh, prevented me from having children. Uh, didn't know that that was the case until my 40th birthday when three o'clock in the morning whilst on holiday in the Bahamas I woke up in screaming agony um, and uh, we, we had really had no idea anything was wrong I'd conceived um, due to a split condom incident so we were lulled into a false sense of security a few years beforehand that basically my eggs only needed to smell sperm and they would be fertilized. And then it sort of didn't happen, but I had no symptoms at all until, as I say, I woke up in screaming agony on my 40th birthday. Uh, within six months, I had been diagnosed with stage four endometriosis. Uh, I had my first surgery and uh, I basically came round, I was only down in theatre for 30 minutes and I was back on the ward because the consultant took one look inside me and threw his hands up in horror and said, I can't deal with this, it's far too serious. So I got uh, referred to a specialist um, endosurgeon and after five hours of laser surgery to remove the adhesions in my abdomen, uh, I was told that my chances of conceiving naturally were actually probably zero. Mm -hmm. So I was immediately uh, referred to an IVF clinic. We had one cycle of IVF and that was a total disaster. I mean, uh, I think I had eight uh, case harvests that were possibly viable. Uh, nothing um, was fertilized, so I didn't even get to the stage of implantation. Uh, and I'd, I was already on the highest of dosage of all the medication, etc. So they basically said that unless you want to go down the route of donor eggs, um, there's nothing else we can do. Uh, we did contemplate donor eggs, but we'd already had to self-fund our first cycle. And we unfortunately just didn't have the money to do it. And um, so we went back home and... Um, basically did nothing uh, mm -hmm. for about seven years. Uh, we, we just felt that that's what life had dealt with us and we had to get on with it. We didn't know that we had to grieve or anything, so we suppressed uh, a lot of the feelings. And then it was um, about two and a half, maybe nearly three years ago now, uh, like Steph, I, sort of, um, I became aware of the fact that there were some uh, support groups out there, so I joined a few of them. Uh, spent a few days thinking, yeah, I'm not quite sure if this is really for me because I don't really sort of um, feel anything in common with everybody else who was on, on the site. And then I sort of thought, hang on a minute, let's just sort of read a few of the posts properly rather than dismissing them. Mm -hmm. So I did, and I started to think, ooh, actually yes I do feel like that too so I started to respond to some of the comments that um, I was reading and a few people said crikey Nikki you know the advice you've given or the way you've articulated something is really brilliant and I'm a I'm a writer I mean I've 
I wrote my first book when I was four and a half. You cut me in half and there is writer printed through uh, <laughs> my core. Um, but I had never written about my experiences. I've done other writings of, um, since my 40th birthday, but never about infertility. Um, so you know, some people were saying, you, you know, you, you're really good about articulating what I struggle to express. Mm. And then one morning at three o'clock in the morning, um, my sort of subconscious gave me a great big nudge in the rib cage and said, you need to write. Mm -hmm. So I started writing a blog. I started writing a couple of books. Mm -hmm. uh, and the rest, as they say, is, is history. And in the last, oh, we're talking about April. Um, April was the uh, Infertility Awareness Week in the USA. And as part of that, I happened to be at the same time doing a video challenge. So I thought, right, I'm going to start videoing stuff about infertility rather than just writing about it. And I discovered that I could do that uh, as well. So um, when Steph said, uh, Nikki, I'm thinking about doing this, I went, right, count me in. Whatever I can do to help, I will do it you know, uh, to, to be supportive. Um, and the two things that I'm primarily involved in, one is we've got thunderclap campaigns going on at the moment to help build um, our social or increase our social reach so that when we have two key social media posts going out on the 4th and the 10th of September, they sort of hit as many people as possible. They get as much publicity, visibility as possible. And then the other thing is that during the week, I'm doing a couple of, uh, they're not going to be live webinars, I'm, but I'm pre-recording uh, some, some stuff uh, to, to help people with a, a couple of different um, activities, let's call them. Okay. But I'll leave Steph to share what she wants to do about those. Okay. Um, yes, that's what I'm doing. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Yes, uh, the, the thing is that is, it's, it is very important that every single one of us is, is contributing somehow, some way. And uh, every, when there is a big, a big initiative like this, uh, you need somebody to initiate it and say, come on, let's do it like Steph did. But you also need other people around because this initiative cannot proceed cannot happen if, if it's only relying on one person. So, so Steph, you, you know, we are all here behind you. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> yes, and we need you too. So, um, uh, fabulous, fabulous. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, right. So, I think at this point, I would also like to say a warm welcome to Robin. Hi, Robin. Hello. So, let me just unmute you just to... Um, fantastic. Hello, welcome. We met, we met on Twitter hour last night, didn't we? Yes. Yes. yes correct. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. We have already started by introducing ourselves a little bit and share okay. what the passion and vision and how we can contribute to the World Childless Week, which is between the 11th and the 17th of September. I believe you, you know a little, bit, a little bit about it, right? A, a little bit, a little, a little bit. bit. Okay, okay. So this call is recorded, so uh, I yeah. will upload it on YouTube and then everybody is going to have the link so you can mm -hmm. watch it back. So whatever you missed, you can actually watch back later on. Cool. And uh, again, you're very welcome to share it on your social platform, social, you know, Twitter, whatever platforms you, mm -hmm. you prefer. So other people, if you find it of, of, uh, of good value in offering, uh, creating that awareness that we need, that you can share with others. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, Robin, since I'm, I'm talking to you at the moment, what is it that uh, you do? You, apparently, you're a doctor or something. Would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know whether you can hear me and see me or just hear me. This is I a new platform for me. We can see you and we can hear you. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, uh, my name's Dr. Robin Hadley and I'm in Manchester in the UK and I'm really interested in men and men who aren't fathers. So mm -hmm. childless men like myself, men who wanted to be fathers. And when I was training as a counsellor, doing a master's, um, that's what I did my dissertation on. And that's when I found out there wasn't really much about men mm -hmm. and reproduction uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as an experience from their life from their viewpoint 
Yes. And so uh, that's why I'm interested in that. And then I did another master's trying to find the levels of broodness between men and women. Because the assumption is that women are broody and men aren't. But there's very little science to back that up. And mm. so I did a little survey and found out there's very little difference, actually, between the levels of broodness between men and women. But one of the things that did come out, that men were more depressed and more angry and more jealous than women about not being a parent. Right. Uh, right. So that was that. And then I did a PhD looking at older childless men. And so what childless men, childlessness meant over the life course for, for men. And they, they all sort of said there's something missing in their lives mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. about that. Uh, but I think also quite strongly they, they all felt they were viewed negatively. Right. And they, they all feared being seen a paedophile as well uh, because they're older and because they're childless. Right, right. Yes, yes. So uh, I'm just very interested in uh, men's experience. And my own experience was I was very broody in my 30s. I was desperate to be a dad mm -hmm. and didn't become one. Mm -hmm. So I'm now in my uh, late 50s. So um, there's a period of uh, going through that uh experience yes. Yes. but um I, I i call that you know you're 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 a, i was aspiring to be a parent and then i was uncertain and now i'm in a mediated childlessness rather than involuntary because i sort of accept it but i still feel uh, a loss at different mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. and i also feel a bit of an outsider mm -hmm. uh, at time and yeah yeah yes. so that, that's that's me that's you in a, in, a, in a very in a nutshell uh, i'm sure that we have the chance to uh, to connect and and uh, and find out more about each other uh today's call is just to uh, to raise awareness about uh, the what Charles week but also for you that you're here on the call to have the space for you to say hey i'm here that's what I've, that's what happened in my life uh, that's what I would love to contribute towards the World Childless Child, Child Week. Uh, and any ideas, any support, uh, even for me, the most, the most important thing uh, for of this campaign, for my opinion, is, is how, and we already talked about that, how we actually deal with our emotions, how we oh. actually we, we get that support to go through that, that grieving process, to go through that self-acceptance, uh, whatever happens and whether it was because of a medical issue or whether of, of a life circumstance in my case mm. it wasn't a medical issue luckily for me uh, however it was a life circumstance um, yeah. and uh, and uh, and all circumstances actually it wasn't just one but primarily you know I, I, in love with my partner but my partner didn't want to have children. Now my partner and I, we are together. We're really happily married. Uh, and, um, but there were a number of other circumstances that uh, made, made it clear to me that uh, I, won't be, I won't be able to be a mother. Yeah. So, so, uh, so the grieving process, it has been going on for many years now, <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you. So, so there's it's still the times that uh, the wounds are there. You know, they, they have healed a bit, but there's still something that could happen that could trigger that and then I'm still learning how I could uh, uh, less become less uh, offended or get you know I'm still in you know still learning you know it's not something that you can completely utterly uh, say I'm done with it I am completely strong and nothing will penetrate me <laughs> I don't know if, if there's somebody out there who can manage to do that please do come in touch to tell me how you did it <laughs> because I don't know how I can, we can actually get to that state, but we are working step by step. Uh, and emotional healing is really, for me, it is, it is a major part of how to raise awareness, how we can connect more with our emotions and accept how we feel and, and create that, uh, that safety to, with people that like, validate us and recognize what we're going through to open up and express these feelings yeah. uh, in a safe in a, in a, in a safe uh, um, space yeah um so so uh, equally writing and creating my own book he actually has come up to me and although i didn't start in this way i'm actually now i felt the calling 
Uh, and uh, and then Nikki and I, we got in touch. And I said, by the way, I'm involved with uh, the World Childless Week. And Nikki had no idea what was going on in my life. And when we had a chat, I said, mm -hmm. do you actually realize, Nikki, that I'm writing a book and the book angle is about that, you know, being yeah. childless. So uh, not by choice, you know, and, and, um, and here I am. And I said, well, and then I met Steph which the actual, you know, she actually said she founded the whole um, World Childless uh, Week. And uh, here we are. And we are connected here on, on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then that's it, you know, it takes, it takes courage. You know, you've got, you've got to be brave to, uh, to, to follow your heart and believe that uh, you matter. You know, I mm. think that's another big, uh, big um, uh, um, sort of, learning from, from this whole experience and, uh, and everybody who's going to feel the calling and join us on this, that uh, I matter, you matter, we matter. And the yeah. fact that, uh, you know, we are both men and women, this is open not only to women, but also mm -hmm. to men, that makes it even more, um, it makes it more sort of, uh, I would say, it's, it's stronger. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's more real because it happens to both people men and women right so um how are we getting on with time okay it's almost 11 minutes past eight so um i would also like to uh, to welcome um uh, chelsea i'd like to give chelsea the, the chance to talk and jody um jody uh, you briefly started uh, saying a few things about gateway women uh, I think it's only fair because at that point I hadn't pressed the recording button. So I think it's only fair for you to say a few more things. But somebody's telling me that uh, we will be meeting again. We will be connecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so would you like to say a few things about yes. yourself? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I wanted to say hello to Robin. Um, Hi. Who's a, a colleague of mine I haven't seen for a year. Uh, we both um, are mm -hmm. part of AWOC, which is Aging Without Children. Um, so uh, we go back a long way. We do. <laughs> and it's really nice to see your face, Dr. Robin Hadley. Thank um, you. You hadn't got your doctorate last time we saw each other, so yeah. chapeau. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so my name's Jodie Day. I'm the founder of Gateway Women, which is the global friendship and support network for childless women. Well, it is now. But it started off, as all of these things seem to do, um, eight years ago as a blog, thinking I was the only childless woman in the whole world um, because nobody would let me talk about it. And I couldn't find any, I couldn't find myself reflected anywhere in books, in the media, uh, on the Internet, anywhere at all. And so I started this blog and um, I resonated with what you said, Shafali, like if this helps one person, your research, I thought if one woman reads this, that's great. Mm -hmm. And then the very next day I got my first piece of PR uh, about the blog. And then uh, women from all over the world were writing, saying things like, how do you know the exact words that are in my head? Um, you've read my mind. I thought I was the only person. And so there's this immediate sense of kind of connection as you were talking, Chrisula, and I had tears running down my face because this was the first time I had had any sense of being understood. And I think two of the most healing words you can hear, empathic healing words you can hear when you're really struggling and you're isolated is, mm -hmm. me too, mm -hmm. you know, me too. So that was the start of Gateway Women and it's just gone completely bonkers. <laughs> the last sort of six and a half years um, and um, it now has a global reach of two million um, and we have over a hundred meetup groups around the world in most English-speaking countries UK Europe Ireland Australia New Zealand Canada America South Africa uh, even one in India in Bombay so it is um, you know it has become an extraordinary platform and I run workshops called the Reignite Weekend, which really was helping women through what I'd found had worked to help me find my plan B. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wrote a book based on that process, which is called Living the Life Unexpected. 12 weeks to your plan B for a meaningful and fulfilling future without children, which is also doing really well. And Gateway Women has become quite an influential sort of brand, you know, for want of a better word. 
Um, but I think it's, you know, it's a really important platform. Uh, I work on a very collaborative model. You know, mm-hmm. I think that there is, you know, there is so much more that needs to be done to support childless women and men. My work is around women, um, and, but I am, you know, I am childless men friendly, as Robin knows. <laughs> Uh, and whenever I'm interviewed, like on the radio or anything like that, I always drop in something about childless men. And if I don't, I get it in the ear. <laughs> so um, so I, I only heard about World Childless Week very recently. I think it's a great initiative. And during, during World Childless Week, 11th to the 17th of September, I will be tweeting and blogging. And I'd very yeah. much like to, um, to interview Stephanie um, and Chris and Nikki and get more background about what's going on. I'd love to have a little bit more, if possible, of somewhere, some web page somewhere that actually outlines what's happening on each day because I was digging into the Facebook page today and I saw there was a different theme for different days, mm-hmm. but it took quite a lot of digging to find that. Mm-hmm. So I have a sense that perhaps either I haven't found it or there's still perhaps a space for a, a web page or something with it yeah uh, is, okay I, I haven't found it brilliant so i'll <laughs> shut up now just to say that the uh the awesome might of gateway women is with you okay fabulous hey. <laughs> fantastic well the thing is if uh, everybody everybody can get um a blog article out there and i think nikki you've already done one i'm going to do another one uh, and i'll be i'll be posting blog articles as well so if there's anybody who's already got a website could actually have access to blog then then let's do it uh because uh, at the moment there's no uh, steph there's no website uh set up but you are need to do set up one pretty yeah, soon at some work. point yeah so at some point uh, can, can i just say that uh, steph is now the proud owner of <laughs> worldtellthisweek.com <laughs> Yay! And tomorrow we are sorting out how to point it to um, my web um, my web servers, uh, so that in the next couple of days I will be able to at least get one page up there on the home page, which says uh, some of the key information about what's happening on each day and some of the key links as well. Mm-hmm. So that there's just one page there if people search for that as the main name. So it's work in progress. <laughs> yes, fabulous, fabulous. Jaffali, yeah? If you could send me that information as well, I'd be happy to put that on my website and on my Twitter feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think the information about uh, uh, the vision of what the World Childless Week and uh, what's happening during the week including including uh, the different themes and the different possibilities for people to get involved and how they can get involved uh you know like uh, getting here on this platform live shows or radio shows or uh, blog articles writing webinars everything that's going to be happening uh, the childless hour on twitter uh, facebook uh, links all of that you know if there's if there's a way we can all fit that in somewhere so it is accessible to everybody because that makes that gives that clarity for people to say, I mean, some people may say, yeah, fabulous idea. I would love to get involved, but they, they hesitate because they need more information in front of them. So once they have got that in place, I think, I think we're going to be kicking. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So, um, okay. I would also love to say, uh, give a chance to Chelsea because Chelsea is actually joining us from Canada. Hopefully you're still there, Chelsea. Hello. Hi. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Fabulous. Okay. So would you like to say a few things about yourself? Because uh, you, you have set up something, um, um, it's called what is child free is not I, I cannot read the whole thing can you just tell I, us uh, yeah it's child free is not a dirty word uh so basically i have a little bit of a different perspective because i'm actually child free by or childless by choice um and i run a community of other women who are childless by choice uh we only started a few years ago not even quite i just really started getting uh traction on it lately um but i started it because anytime I would tell someone I wasn't having children and I was making that decision not to have children, it just act so shocked and so appalled. Um, mm-hmm. And I knew there was no way I was the only one out there that felt like that. Um, so I kind of went out there 
searching for people that felt the same. And I, I found some websites and I found some communities, but they didn't really, I was in my, you know, early 20s at that time. And it didn't really jive with me quite the same, the messaging. So I decided, you know what, I, I have a web background. I'm going to start a community, see if I can find anyone out there uh, that knew parenthood wasn't for them. And I did. I found um, we're slowly building our little tribe. We, two million is amazing. That's amazing, Jody. Um, we've just hit about 10,000 women. So we are from 42 different countries last time I mm-hmm. checked. Um, and we're really just trying to bring um, child free to the mainstream. I want to normalize the fact that there's women out there that don't have children, whether mm-hmm. it's by chance or by choice. I don't want it to be seen as a shocking uh, revelation because it still seems to be really shocking to a lot of people. Um, I want, and I want people to know that like women, especially it's okay to not want motherhood and all that entails. Um, It's okay to make a different choice. If that's, if that's the lifestyle you want, or there's reasons, you know, a lot of people in my community, there's genetic reasons they don't want children or there's financial reasons. Um, So we kind of give them the support for that. But we also, we produce a lot of just um, fun material and a lot of uh, community-driven and created material that they like to share, which is really great. Um, And I think that's what I can bring to Childless Week, uh, World Childless Week, is the community loves to share and comment. And that's Mm -hmm. really great, especially in social media, because we're just trying to get the word out there that, you know, we are this huge community of women and men that either don't have children because they decided not to or because they couldn't. Um, so I'm really looking forward to meeting other people in the same stream. I'm going to the Not Mom conference in October to meet. I'll other, see you there. Uh, I'll see you there, great. Chelsea. I'm, I'm, sp- I'm speaking at that conference. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is my first time ever doing a chat like this, so I apologize. Uh, but thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for being here with us. And, and uh, there's nothing to, to be sorry for. You know, you're, you're welcome. You're truly welcome. And uh, great to hear what's happening in another country. And, uh, you know, it, it actually, you have so many, you know, thousands of women that are actually connected, like equally, Jody, you know, you've done fantastically well. They have got so many communities in different places in the world. So uh, here in England, let's do something equally amazing. Come on, come on, let's do it. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, fabulous. Um, I would also love to very briefly, Steph, if you could just say a few ideas uh, what uh, each day is going to involve without giving too much information, because probably at this stage you may like to tweak a few things and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing's totally settled yet. As I said, everything, all the ideas are, you know, in the process of, you know, like uh, marinating, uh, you know, like marinate, like a little sauce, you know, we're getting inspiration from different directions. And then eventually we say, okay, even though it's not perfect, let's do it. Because, you know, if we wait to be, to be perfect, we will never do it. <laughs> so that's something my learning, you know, from life, you know, because I've been a perfectionist for many, perfectionist for many years. So, uh, so there you are. So likewise, this is why you look at me with that light out. I just go back from my Pilates class. I said, I don't care. I'm not going to, to, to worry about anything else. I'm just going to turn up and do the show. <laughs> so, so there you are. Um, so, so Seth, what's happening during the week? Okay, right. Um, when I first decided to do it, first of all, I didn't expect it to get as big as it has already. I thought perhaps it was going to be just a few of the little groups on Facebook that I communicated with. So it's amazing to get people getting on board already. Um, because it was just me starting it off and not knowing who would want to help, if anyone would want to help, I thought it was easiest to just keep to each day having a little bit of a topic because obviously the whole thing about being childless is there's so much you can talk about that we couldn't fit it all in properly within a week so I thought if I just focus a little bit on something each day and then seeing how that works out it gives us an idea for following forward for next year Mm -hmm. so the first thing I wanted to do on the Monday was I've got called it childless in because I don't think people still realize that we are in every city in every town and in every street there's a childless woman or man 
Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to basically start off by saying we are everywhere. We might not be focal because we might not be confident enough to speak out, mm -hmm. but we are here. We're the aunt who never married that you don't really talk to and you don't know why she doesn't have children or the cousins who are happily married and they haven't had 10 children you know, or whatever or two mm -hmm. children and you don't know why. And it's just basically saying we are here. We might not say we're here, but we are here. Mm -hmm. So it's just the first day is about saying, you know, this is us we exist we're here you need to sit up and actually notice us mm -hmm. that was day one um tuesday i wanted to do some facts and figures on some of the reasons of why we end up childless not all just about down to fertility which is what most people assume it is again they say okay there's a problem with the man there's a problem with the woman they don't realize how many different ways we all get to the same situation of being childless not by choice mm -hmm. or childless by circumstance whatever you know title you want to use so i don't want to just present graphs and black and white figures that people are going oh that's exciting but i'm not interested i'm trying to get people to actually share some facts and figures but within their own story so it's actually something they've suffered from so if it's endometriosis they can put some facts in but it's say how it actually affected them mm -hmm. what age they did and you know so it's making it more personal so that people are more likely to actually sort of sit down and read it so I've got a few people already. If anybody else wants to come forward and give me information, I'm happy to take on lots more written pieces. Um, Wednesday, I decided it was easy to want to do something again where people could mix and join in if they wanted to. So I wanted them to write letters addressed to Dear Infertility. But obviously not everybody's going to say dear infertility. It could be dear endo. It could be dear early menopause. It could be Mr. Right, you never turned up. There's lots of different ways of addressing the letters, but it's just, you know, sort of saying this is a letter, this is what I'm angry at, or as it happens, somebody's actually done a thank you letter, which is interesting, and I'll be sharing on a different day. But it's again showing our emotions in what they can be in their rawest form to let people know that what we go through really hurts. Um, then we go forward on to the Thursday, and we've got innocent words. So I'm talking about the comments and the casual flippant sayings that parents will say to us that they think are funny but we don't as in you'll turn around and say you know oh you've got children no and it's like well have you thought of adoption and it's like well of course i thought of adoption it's you know it's just one of those questions that can cause a lot of pain so we're focusing on four questions there and i'm going to i'm still deciding which way to go of how i'm going to work the day so that's something Nikki I want to speak with you tomorrow which I was talking about so make a final decision on it um then leading on to what we got to Friday is why we are worthy because we are so worthy of who we are where we are in this world what we can contribute to the world it's because again a lot of people think that they are overlooked by society um they go through life not feeling they've got a worth because they didn't have children because it could be sort of almost pushed into us from a child that we should be a mother and if we're not a mother we've done something wrong we haven't it didn't work out that way we are 100 percent worthy to be who we are in this world <laughs> excuse me so again that's that one um the 16th is actually explaining why i chose saturday the 16th as the focus of the week um i don't want to go into too much about that today because i'm going to be writing about it on the day um but that is going to be the day that world Childless week focuses around every year so we're, at the moment i've just done it automatically to, from the monday to the sunday and the 16th falls in on place on the saturday and then sunday is about moving forwards because that is the aim for everybody at the end of the day to find acceptance in whatever way they can and move forward and find that plan b or that happy place or a different plan in life than they expected so that's the sort of summary i've got for the week at the moment i have got a lot of different people doing blogs producing articles for me i'm still open to more can't have too many as far as i'm concerned they will basically all the articles are going to be shared on the um the facebook page the world childless week facebook page hopefully by next year the website will be amazing thanks to nikki and we will be going all over the place there but i'm also asking people if they share anything about it to give me the link on the day on the relevant day and i will share it to the page and vice versa so it's a case of there's one place people can go to find articles, but I will link in anybody who does an article about it. So then, you know what I mean? It's just trying to get it out there. There's lots of us, lots of different groups, lots of different pages all over the place where we can all find where we sit and where mm -hmm. we feel healthy and mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. There you go. Fabulous. <laughs> yes, yes. It sounds a good plan. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I needed something. <laughs> 
Yes, and and I'm sure things will will uh, will uh, you know change a bit, or will something else will be added on, or and uh, you know we we are open to uh, to changes. It's okay, <laughs> it's okay not to stick with the plan A and move on to plan B. Um, okay, so um, we have already shared here, Jody. Thanks for for uh, for the idea to all, everybody's sharing their email addresses and uh, maybe Facebook and Twitter, uh, you know, how we can get in touch with you. So uh, Robin, if you'd like to um, use yours as well, uh, thank uh, you everybody. You, just need, you need to open the chat window, Robin. Yeah, On the bottom the of the screen, there's a chat button. If you click that, Is it? yeah, it's like a little um, speech bubble. No, that's the wrong one. Um, then you'll see a chat screen will pop up. I haven't got that. I'm on you my phone. Got... All right, then. So... Do you want okay. to? Do you want well, to um, tell me what your email address, yeah. and we'll type. I'll type it in for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. It's yeah. Uh, R A Hadley. Yeah. Seven point eight. Seven point eight. Yeah. At <laughs> gmail dot com. <laughs> nice and precise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And your your Twitter handle because it's, it's changed, uh, hasn't it? Uh, at Robin Hadley one. Oh, Robin Hadley one. And that's Hadley with an E in it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, H-A-D-L-E-Y. Okay, okay. I've, yeah. I've given you Robin Hadley exclamation mark. Okay, <laughs> Hadley. try again. Hadley one. And what's your, what's your research website? Is Wanted to be a Dad still live? Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's www.wanted2bedad.com? To to be be dad. Yeah, okay. Or, or Robin Hadley website, I think, works as well. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, thanks, Josie, Josie, Jody, <laughs> and congratulations because you, you, you are three. You are a psychotherapist. No, oh, I am so not. I am. I am on the exit ramp, but I still got like oh. this pile of books behind me on my holiday in Ibiza. All oh, right. <laughs> oh, good. The Farley understands my pain. I know by the look yeah. in her eyes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. sorry. I, I thought you were there. No, no. But I, you I'm, are. You're on the ramp. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, let me ask you bef before we close that you are actually okay for me to um, uh, because when uh, I can put the description of uh, what the call is about on YouTube, I could get your names and your uh, Facebook address or some sort of website address, something that people can connect with you. Would you like me to do that? Is that is that okay? Is that okay to put that? I'm uh, very happy for my Twitter and uh, website. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think email address. I will not put email addresses there. But you know, that's website and, website yeah. addresses and Facebook addresses probably would be a good idea because that's where people can you know click yeah. and find out I'll more do about my you. I'll Facebook one as well then. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when when you do that, then I will uh, include that in the YouTube description, mm -hmm. and I will mm -hmm. also share it uh, on my Facebook page as well. So so that's uh, just different channels, different ways people you know. Um, Attract the attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, did we get? Uh, did I? I don't see uh, Stephanie's details in in the chat screen. Did were you able to Ooh. share your stuff? Uh, I can if I can work out how to do it. I'm completely new to this Zoom thing, so. So yeah, what's the? Are you on your phone, Steph? Say again. Are you on your phone or your computer? No, I'm on the desktop. Can I just actually type it in or? Yeah. Yeah. So what is it everybody's just, after for? You need to open the chat screen and then just your, um, your email address ah. would be great. It's just I wanted to email you to ask you and Nikki to, um, to ask a few questions for the blog that I'm going to write. There you go. That's the email. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. What's the, and the then your, your Twitter is um, at Charles Voice, is isn't it? Um, it's Childless Voice at um, Childless Week. Yeah. But I think yeah. everybody on here is already sort of connected. Okay. That Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, right. Fabulous. So, uh, so uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining uh, our live yeah. chat uh, today in support of uh, Walk Childless Week. That's happening between the 11th and the 17th of September. There will be more live shows here. And I'm happy to host them on a Wednesday evening, if that's a good evening for all of you. Uh, Wednesday, 7:30 p.m., which is 8:30 uh, for for you in in uh, in uh, mainland Europe. <laughs> so so hopefully 
so hopefully hopefully you know we can still uh, get in touch with uh, with Chelsea and other people because the more we we let people know the more people can connect here we can have a number of people joining us so so uh, so uh, the more the merrier so yes. hopefully 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 um, we can connect again on the Twitter hour on the childless hour and uh, yeah. and then uh, the radio show which I host is on Thursdays between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. And it's on redshiftradio.co.uk. I will share all this is information. So we so we all all know we are on the same page. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you for organising this, Chrisula. So yeah. Much yeah. Much appreciated. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank yeah. you. And look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.